What is up, everyone? Welcome to another edition of our weekly Friday market update. If you haven't tuned in before, typically every Friday at around 12 o'clock Pacific time, I go over several things, the relevant headline articles that I feel like people should know about, including my thoughts with these articles and my actual understanding. We go over any sort of activities that I may have done and so that you have a general sense of the things that are happening before the data is actually published. And then we actually look at the data itself. So you will see for yourself what is happening in terms of inventory, what is happening in terms of prices, um, and you will be able to see that some of that information all in different counties throughout the Bay Area. However, before we begin, if you or anyone you know is considering to buy, sell, or invest in the Bay Area, I'm never too busy to have a conversation. I'm always very transparent and candid with whichever direction and whichever side that you're interested in. Please feel free to find my contact details below. We can schedule a time for a phone call or a Zoom call or feel free to share this video with a friend. A lot of people are very active these days in terms of buying a house. But the key is at the same time, not all counties are experiencing the same type of changes. So let's dive into that. So let's go first. Number one thing, which is, has been going on in a lot of people's minds, which is related to the San Francisco exodus. And the exodus isn't um, entirely incorrect by the media. It's a lot of people have left San Francisco. Now, a lot of people have also left like San Jose and Oakland altogether. So as you can see, San Francisco rent closes out the year down 27%. Keep in mind, the shelter in place didn't happen until March. So I think the numbers will actually be likely worse than it is 27%. I bet it's probably going to be over closer to 30% uh, over, over, over time. So I think it'll be really bad. It's already really bad, but I think it's actually worse than what's being reported. I think it'll be actually even worse than that because this does not actually factor in uh, any sort of free rent, uh, rent that is provided. So I think there are certain aspects there that may be impacted. However, you can see that the problem is not happening across all areas. While some areas like Oakland looks like it's dropped 15%, other areas have been maybe 10%. Some look at, looking at further away, like Emeryville, Dublin, have actually only dropped a few percent. So it's very important to understand where has been the declines, where people are actually moving to, and to what is actually happening. The also key to understand is the one-bedroom apartments have dropped significantly more, but it makes sense, versus a two-bedroom. So two-bedroom doesn't drop nearly as much because people have preferred more space. The people that are staying in the two-bedroom tends to um maybe be a couple maybe different groups together so the type of individuals and types of groups i would find uh two bedrooms are certainly different so the decline of that has been a little bit less than one bedrooms or studios so something that to be aware of now you know for me i help a lot of people buy and sell properties it's an amazing time as you can imagine when it comes to interest rates being the, so low but also the flexibility that people have but you know there's people that need to rent for different reasons buying and owning a place is not for everyone. But for those that are renting, be sure to negotiate hard. And if you are in a rental, do not simply just renew a lease, right? I mean, if you see your neighbors are dropping by this much, you are a fool, quite frankly, to renew your lease. Negotiate hard because this is your time to do it. Now, we may be closer to the bottom of things, perhaps, um, than how it's been. Like, I, I suspect this year will likely continue to decrease. I don't think it will decrease another, you know, 30 plus percent because that's obviously extremely steep. But then again, the time of the last nine months has been really uh, incredible to see in specific areas. But I suspect things will may likely drop, but it's not always for certain. If things start to open up, there is certainly more demand. I see a lot of buyers that are going back into the market in San Francisco because they think this is the bottom. And it's hard to argue when you have things drop this much and everything looks terrible that um, this would maybe closer to the bottom than the top. So something just to be aware of. For those that are renting, be sure to negotiate hard, either negotiate rent by rent, negotiate from uh, just a price perspective, and be willing to walk away. The key to any negotiation, whether it's offers or when it's in this case leases or anything, is be ready to walk away. But if you have that, then you'll be in a much stronger position. So hopefully that helps those people that are still renting. Uh, next, the Bay Area's pandemic exodus is real. Left the country in 2020, says U-Haul. It's so funny because um, we haven't seen too many reports from a, a, a trucking company. 
but it is kind of interesting to see. It's interesting to see that there's a lot of one-way traffic outside of uh, the Bay Area um, when it comes to U-Hauls. Now, at the same time, there are also people moving in. What I found very interesting is there's a lot of people that I found, some people are still moving in. Because a lot of the companies, be aware, while well, some companies say they were quote-unquote remote only, look at the job descriptions of a lot of these companies. They still want people to be relatively close to campus. Even Facebook is doing that way, right? So look at Facebook's job posting. Facebook has the job postings that you have to be close to Menlo Park, maybe close to Austin, close to these specific hubs. But they're not full remote. You can't work in the middle of nowhere. So it's something interesting to see. A lot of companies are still preparing for people to come back. And I suspect that they will want people to come back uh, pretty quickly if, if it's all resolved, uh, at least from a politics perspective and just from how different states are handling things. So just something to be aware of, but it's kind of interesting to see U-Haul reporting, kind of the same thing that we've been knowing all, all the time. So what else is happening in the Bay Area? So UCSF expanded plan for his uh, campus draws opposition. So they plan to expand and build a 2 million square foot hospital in uh, around in San Francisco. Now, what is the problem? Now, uh, as you can imagine, most parts of San Francisco does not just have, um, it's not just empty land, right? So it's gonna be tearing some other parts down. And so there's a lot of you know, pushback for this. Now, how does a very, very rich, um, university but also how does a rich um constituent what do they do to try to accommodate these they're going to try to build thousands of units for different people whether it's their own staff maybe low income housing maybe medium low income housing maybe housing for their own employees nurses things like that so really interesting to see they want to expand the capacity but there's certainly pushback but i think at the end of the day it's going to continue to they're going to continue to move forward. Now, it may take time um, for that to happen, but it will likely happen. Uh, so I got a question from Lewis. Where could other people where could people find out rent of other neighbors? It's actually pretty simple. As you can imagine, most times if they're going to rent out a place, it's going to be public. So look on public sites that are typically common for rentals, whether it's apartments.com, Zillow.com, Zumper. These are all fantastic areas because the reality is vacancy rates are high. So they will be listing the properties that are maybe identical to your unit if it's like in a community online. So you will see very easily what it is. And keep in mind, factor in potentially any free months of rent that they will provide. Many times they will provide one or two months of rent. So bake that in and you use that to negotiate, right? It's much cheaper for any landlord to keep you and just renegotiate a deal than to now have it vacant potentially take a few weeks to even get somebody in it's in their best interest to make it work now you can't go crazy you can't be like 50 percent discount and think they're going to do it you have to be within reason you have to be willing to walk away but there are those are the different lovers and different data that you want to share with others when it comes to the numbers but also when it comes to retention so hopefully that helps Best of luck on your journey. Now, next, mortgage rates drop even lower to new record of 2.65%. Now, the interesting part with these record drops is it's certainly been interesting to see the impact that it has had for different places all around the country. For the most part, we have hit record highs. Now, as you can see, U.S. home prices hit 14-year highs since October. A lot of the areas, Phoenix, Seattle, very interesting. San Diego sees the steepest rise. Seattle's a little bit interesting. I wouldn't have suspected that. Phoenix makes sense because it's pretty mild climate, especially all year round. It's relatively affordable given their average price points. Uh, there's a good amount of new homes and new construction, and it's a very popular spot. San Diego makes sense, right? People have the opportunity. Why don't we live in a, a, a very mild temperature all year round? Wonderful lifestyle there. So it makes sense a lot of people may choose to go there, especially I think in San Diego, there's a lot of people that used to commute a lot from San Diego to all the way to LA, especially like Irvine. So it is interesting to see that, but it makes sense that people that are maybe in LA choose to live in a, in a place like San Diego for now. So what are those increases? Look at these numbers. Phoenix, Seattle, San Diego, 
increase, 11.7% increase, 11.6% increase. And this is year over year over October. And remember, the previous October did not have where we're at today. And the previous October, quite frankly, was slower. So these numbers, actually, if you compare it to a, a COVID timeframe of the nine months, I bet these are actually much higher. I bet those are actually 15 to 20% increases, easy. So something important to understand, like a lot of people that have been on the sidelines have regretted it. Um, it's been incredible, like completely outpriced. Now, what does this mean in the Bay Area? The Bay Area does not have a similar story, but it depends on which part of the Bay Area. The Bay Area is very big. People have very different connotations of it. And so we are going to go take a look at the data. And let's take a look at how the Bay Area has resulted in these record home prices through a year, record low interest rates. And what are my predictions of what I see moving forward, given what I know, which is quite a bit in terms of activity. Now, before we go over this data, I will share a little bit about some of the offers that I made this week, give you some sense of what is happening because this is competitive Intel. Now, we made two offers in Contra Costa County, price range roughly in this case, first time home buyers, roughly around seven, dollars $800,000, single family house, three bedroom type of house. Both of those properties had, one had over 30 offers, the other had uh, 20 something offers. It went for about 5% more than what it should have gone for if you compare it to what others have sold in the last two, three months. So it's been a very big jump, very big increase in a very short amount of time. And so Contra Costa County is one of the most competitive markets. So in terms of the hottest markets in, let's say, the Bay Area, if you want to consider Contra Costa kind of part of the Bay Area, it's entirely up to you. I think it is. Um, it is one of the hottest markets by far, not even close. So that is uh, something just to be aware of. You will, you will have a lot of competition. You will have potentially difficulties appraising because if you think about appraisals, an appraiser is going to look at the previous three months, six months of data. But the market is rising, you're going to have to put in a bid much higher than what others have sold to be able to get even get the house. But there will be a difference. So you have to be prepared financially to be able to fund more down payment to be able to fund that gap. Something to be very mindful of. So if you are in like a 3% down situation, 5% down situation, right? These kind of situations where it's very tight, be aware, like single family may be very difficult for you to win. You may have to consider something that's less desirable right now, but it's still a great property, like a condo townhome, which has way less competition, but uh, something to be aware of. Now, other counties, let's take a look at San Mateo County. San Mateo County, let's look at the data this week, new listings. This week, 64, it's been a little bit higher, but not that much, right? And this was all, all the way till yesterday. Continue pending, not as much activity just because there's not that many houses for people to buy. Now, keep in mind this data. If you take a look at this, this is what I showed the last time. So you can have a comparison of what the data shows this week. Be mindful, though, that this is sold data. The way that these are calculated is that when you, when you list a property, it'll be active. And then when you get in contract, it'll be pending. Most houses will take 30 days to go pending. And then the public number will be resulted. So this is always a laggard. Right. Be keep that in mind. It's always behind at least 30 days. But it does give you a little bit of the sense of what happened in the past. So the fact that in January, because if you think about it, these kind of closed in early December around that time. Right. End of November, early December. And so you already see a little bit of tick. I suspect this year we will have a pretty wild year. I think things will be very competitive. However, I think San Mateo County, given where it's at the location the price point may be not as competitive as every other county so i think those that are looking at it it's a great opportunity you're pretty much buying for what you what others have sold for so it's, it's pretty predictable as to what this will go for so something to keep in mind condos townhomes same store all year round it's been relatively flat all year so it's been pretty predictable as well let's take a look at santa clara county so santa clara county has has a big increase over the last few weeks but we are still kind of in below the December levels. So still not too many listings, not too many contingent pending. You know, there's not too many things that happened over the last week, given there just weren't too many homes to begin with. The average prices looks like has declined, 
However, I suspect as we go into January, at the end of January, it should probably balance out. But for Santa Clara County, it will also depend on where you buy. I would say the higher price points of Santa Clara County, like a Palo Alto, like a Mountain View, those areas have been relatively predictable in prices. Now, if you go on the quote unquote lower end of Santa Clara County, you look at Milpitas, you look at North San Jose, um, these areas, or you look at even like um, Cambrian, Almaden, these areas, you are seeing prices go up. You will see that for sure as the weeks goes on. I made an offer for a house in Milpitas listed at 1 million, single family house, it's kind of in the Pinewoodish area, so kind of south Milpitas. Uh, three bed, two bath, eleven hundred so square feet. Um, that was listed at about one million, but it it should have went for close to one point one two. I would say the fair market is one point one two, and that ultimately went for over one point two million. So that's uh eight thousand. Was that seven percent increase? Six seven percent increase. So something to be aware of. I think the South Milpitas, North San Jose area um, are very competitive given the price points are a little over a million dollars, which is a very popular sweet spot for a lot of individuals to enter in a single family house. Keep that in mind as you do your battles in the county. Condos, townhomes, as you can see though, as a uh, you know, pretty steady increase over, the, over time. Nothing crazy, slow and steady increase. Let's take a look at uh, Alameda. So Alameda, um, not so much, as I mentioned, because we're only about a weekend, I wouldn't derive too much. Alameda is very competitive as well. I think you'll see over the next couple of weeks, it should actually kind of balance out to back to these December levels, depending on if there was a good amount of inventory. Um, uh, two weeks ago, we made a couple of offers in Alameda County, like let's say the Berkeley, North Oakland, Piedmont area, very competitive. Um, you can see the velocity is very, very quick. And then last but not least, let's take a look at Contra Costa County. As I mentioned, it is a very intense market. Out of all the markets that I just shared, uh, Contra Costa County will have likely the most offers and the most demand right now. It's the lowest price point of the four counties. And we're just talking about single family homes, just to be clear. But I think out of the four counties, this is the most competitive given the prices are um, the lowest, but also the price per square foot is also the lowest. So you get the biggest house for your money there. So I hope this was helpful. Appreciate you tuning in to another episode of our weekly market update every Friday at around 12 o'clock. Sorry, I ran a little bit late today, but usually at 12 o'clock Pacific time, you can tune in live, either follow me on my Instagram. Uh, you can tune in if you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, it's always generally 12 o'clock, or you can tune in on the YouTube channel, which you are doing right now and or the podcast, which also gets recorded. So if you or any of your friends has any interest in buying, selling, or investing in the Bay Area, let's connect. Never too busy to have a conversation and to be able to help them every step of the way. Hope you guys have a nice weekend. I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.